The FIFA 23 Ultimate Edition releases tomorrow, and if you really want to hit the ground running, there are three main things that you need to be doing right this second so that once it does release tomorrow, you have an advantage over everyone else that you will be playing against. But before we do get into the video, if you're looking to get some coins, then there is no better place than Mule Factory. At some point over the next couple of weeks, they will have coins on stock, which you can very easily head over there, buy, and they'll automatically get added to your account. And to make this deal even better, if you use the link in the description down below and use Fnatic 5 at checkout, you'll get yourself a 5% discount. Link can be found in the description down below. And getting back into the video. So far, FIFA 23 has been a complete grind, and that is purely because EA have gone back to the way things used to be about five or six years ago, when a web app would release way before the game, way before early access, and actually way before the actual release of the next FIFA. And that does mean that the only way that you can make coins is if you are able to trade. And this has been difficult for most players. But if you have spent the last week going through this game, building up your coin balance, and now you want to get ready for the release tomorrow, these are the things you should be looking into. So firstly, it's time to build your team. Now I did highlight this at the beginning of the week that it was a mistake for you to try and build your team at that point. It was purely because you have a very limited amount of coins and those coins are much better spent on trades which will give you more coins than actually buying into a team which you can't use for another week. The only reason you would want to buy a team is if you could play matches and there's only a very small percentage of players which did get access to FIFA 23 early. For them, it makes sense, but for 99% of the rest of the community, it didn't. But if you are getting the Ultimate Edition tomorrow, this is a time in which you should start thinking about buying your team. It doesn't need to be anything amazing, and I still don't recommend spending every single one of your coins on buying a team. But definitely take about 50% of your overall coins that you have right now and set that as your budget for your team. Of course, this is the start of a new Ultimate team. You're not going to have anything crazy ridiculous, but you can still get a full goal team that's normally my bare minimum before i actually go into an online match you should also bear in mind that whatever you do build right now can very easily scale up tomorrow once you do start bringing in a consistent source of coins by actually going through these matches and after a week it'll probably be a completely different team you may even be in a position where the team that you're currently planning to build could play awful within game. It simply doesn't fit the meta of FIFA 23. So you might need to change up quite a bit tomorrow. But that's fine because at least you have a team, at least you're going through it, and at least you're experimenting with players. And if a player doesn't work with your playstyle, you can easily replace them. And that is why this year I'm starting with a full Premier League team. Nothing fancy, and I do understand the irony behind it. For years, I've been complaining about the chemistry system within Ultimate Team and how I want it to change so that I could build my very own Ultimate Team. I don't want to be there thinking about and trying to link up players just because they're on weak chem. I just want to be playing with the best possible players. And it's funny that now EA has made that change that the first team that I put together is going to be a full Premier League team. And that is purely because it still gets the maximum chem. It still gets 33 chemistry in total. And with everyone having free chem, it does mean that everyone's stats are going to be boosted. And I'm anticipating that especially on the first couple of weeks, no one's going to really understand chem too much. And they're probably not going to have max chem unless they're going for a full league team like me. Of course, the hardcore players, they're definitely going to understand and they're going to have some amazing teams, but I'm probably not going to be playing against them because I'm not so good myself. This also does give me a bit of freedom, so if I have got a Premier League player which isn't that good, once I do get into game, I'll quickly figure that out and I can very easily swap them without losing my maximum chem because obviously I'm just going to replace them with another Premier League player. My main focus is not actually to earn coins from the matches that I play, but instead to trade. So this is why I'm going down this route. Moving on to the second thing that you need to do is start investing. There's already loads of content creators and communities out there which are sharing their investments which they're hoping will increase from this point till tomorrow. But if you're unclear of how you can do that and you feel like you're just going to buy into something which is going to completely drop off by tomorrow because everyone else is trying to do the exact same thing, well, you really can't go wrong with your long-term investments. 
This is typically your SBC fodder. Try to look for players which are 83 to 86 rated, and even though they're not the most desirable players to use in your team, you can very easily buy them anywhere from 1,500 coins going up to around 4,000 coins depending on the player it is, buy them and just store them to your club. You don't need to use them for your team, but I guarantee at some point within the future, when EA does release an SBC which does require you to have a certain rating, there's going to be loads of people that haven't got these players within their club so they're going to have to go to the transfer market now when there's sbc releases i always say this i don't have a clue last year we had a couple within october but the very big one which really made this fodder investment work was within november where we had two separate hero sbcs both giving you a pack reward which will give you a random hero item there was so much demand for this SBC that it just increased the price of all of these players with a rating above 83. Some of these players doubled or even tripled in value and it was actually more expensive to complete the SBC, especially if you had nothing within your club, than it was to actually just buy most of these hero cards. And it's likely at some point this will happen again. Maybe not with hero cards, but there will definitely be an SBC available at some point. You just need to buy some of these players that are cheap right now, stall them into your club, forget about them until it does finally come round to a challenge being released. Very similar to this, you can also do the exact same thing with special cards. Now right now, of course, your special cards are limited to team of the weeks. There is a lot of team of the weeks which are going for their minimum price. This is simply because most people don't have enough coins on the trans market to actually buy into these players. They're not good at trading on the web app. And it's unlikely that they will increase tomorrow, but at some point, yet again, there will be a challenge which requires these Team of the Week players. And that's the point that they will increase. And normally, it's the first couple of Team of the Weeks which tend to be the rarest within the game. There's less people available to open packs, there's less people packing these players, and for those that do pack these players, they notice that they're already going for their minimum because no one has coins to buy into them, so instead of wasting their time of listening onto the transfer market, they just discard them. And as time goes on, with more SBCs releasing, and those SBCs requiring you to have Team of the Week players, and people submit those Team of the Week players to complete the SBC, these players get rarer on the market eventually leading to supply being a lot less than demand and they gradually increase. It's a slow process, but if you have the patience, this is definitely going to be beneficial to you. Last year, I made millions of coins just by buying into these types of investments. And the final thing to do is to make sure that you do leave some coins over. It's very easy to get carried away with building your team and having something far better than the average player on foot right at this moment. Or on the complete other side of you, someone like me, get carried away of just throwing your coins and investments because you think everyone is cheap. But it's definitely beneficial for you to also leave a few coins left over. I'm trying to make sure that I don't go less than 10k because if I go less than that, it's going to be significantly harder for me to trade at the beginning and build those coins back up. One of the biggest mistakes that you can make is putting all of your coins into your team only to realize that you have nothing left, but think that's fine because I have a good team. Roll round two tomorrow, you start playing matches and you realize this team isn't good. It doesn't involve any of the meta players. Now what you need to do is list every single one of those players onto the trans market. Wait for them to sell before you have enough coins to buy into a team which actually fits the meta. And even once you do that, it's still the case that you need to start from zero. You're going to put all your coins into a second team where you can't trade and the only way that you have a source for coins is by going through matches. That is a very slow and tedious way to build your ultimate team. It's so much better and I know not many people enjoy doing this in both ways but it's so much better for you to play matches alongside trading. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, we've gone through a couple trading methods already and I will be sharing more this week once the game is fully released where I'll go through some of the easiest trading methods that you can use without having to spend way too much time going through the method itself so that you can focus on what you want to focus on, still have coins left over, still build up your coin balance and then eventually build to your ultimate team. It's so much quicker than if you did just play matches, even if you are a good player. 
So whatever it is you're doing, if you're looking to build your team or invest in players or preferably a bit of both, that you do not spend every single one of your coins because you still want something left over so that you can explore and experiment with the teams that you've bought, maybe buy into more investments or preferably actually go through some of the trading methods. Build up your coin balance a bit more, change your team, buy more investments and keep this loop going. This is the best way in which you can start Ultimate Team. Anyway, guys, that is everything that I'm doing right now and everything that I recommend you start doing right now before the release tomorrow. If you do have any questions about anything, then please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to see you.